OpenSUSE is a distro that not many people talk about, myself included, but it gets brought up in the comments over and over again, especially OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. So at the end of March, I installed it on one of my laptops and I've been daily driving it since then at least for all non-video editing related tasks, because that's my livelihood and I'm not taking any risks with it. And I can safely say that OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is the best rolling release distro I ever used. But it also has some baffling issues. So let's see how it went, what makes Tumbleweed interesting, and you can tell me in the comments if I missed anything or if I'm completely wrong about it. But what I'm right about is today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare, and you probably already know about Alma Linux, the replacement to CentOS. It's free of charge, it's managed by the community, and it's backed financially by Tuxcare. Well, if you plan to run Alma Linux in production environments, or if you already do, now you can get commercial support from Tuxcare as well. With Alma Care, you get 16 years of support for Alma Linux with security updates and new hardware support so your fleet is more stable, maintenance costs are reduced, and your hardware can be used longer. You will also get a dedicated repo for all Alma Linux packages so you get updates faster. It also includes live patching support so you can keep your kernel up to date without rebooting your systems and with zero downtime. And of course you get commercial support for a wide range of packages like Ansible, Kubernetes, MariaDB and MySQL, containers and more. Basically, if you want to deploy Alma Linux in commercial production environments, you need AlmaCare and you can learn all about it by clicking the link in the description. So what is Tumbleweed exactly? It's a rolling release Linux distro, so it gets updated continuously without having specific big new versions you have to upgrade to. It's not bleeding edge, it's what they call leading edge, which seems to mean they'll give you recent versions of everything, but they will test everything thoroughly through their own build service. They actually test packages individually, but also in various clusters to see if a complete system behaves normally. Basically, it's a very stable rolling release. You might not get everything the day it comes out, but you won't have to wait long and your system is basically rock solid. And it also lets you roll back to a previous state in case something goes wrong during an update. And it comes with the usual OpenSUSE goodies, like their own configuration tool, Yast, it uses RPM packages, and it's available for x86, ARM, and PowerPC. Now let's talk about the installer, because it's really different from every other one I used before. Now first you get a license agreement, something that is rarely seen in Linux distros. But I read it and there's nothing weird here, it's just the regular we're not liable if you do something dumb kind of license. You then get very complete network settings, but they're not user friendly at all. They don't detect Wi-Fi networks automatically, you're not sure you're even connected to a network even after entering the password. It's really not well designed compared to other installers on other distros. Now once you figure it out though, you get access to online repos to get software that didn't fit on the ISO or to install updates automatically. It's a very verbose installer with plenty of steps that just show you the system doing its thing and telling you that it's doing it. Sounds exactly like what I'm doing right now, to be honest. Is the OpenSUSE installer coming for my job? Okay, then you get to pick the role of your system. Do you need a desktop with GNOME, Plasma or XFCE, a generic desktop for a minimal install or a server? You can also get other desktop environments from the repos like Cinnamon, Mate, LXQt or even just a window manager like i3. I went with GNOME to begin with, but I'll also take a look at what they did with KDE, don't worry. And we also won't spend too much time on that because it's a desktop, it's not super interesting. The installer offers an automatic partition layout, which doesn't include a separate slash home partition, unfortunately. And it uses BetterFS as the default file system. The guided setup for partitioning is very good though, and does let you set up a slash home partition easily, among other nice options. Now you then pick your time zone, you set up your user account, and you'll get a text recap of what you picked, and you can proceed to install the distro. It is far from the most user-friendly installer I ever used. It's also not the worst, but it's definitely not the best. It's very complete, it has tons of options for advanced installs, 
but it can be pretty obscure. At least it places its button in a logical, regular, usual emplacement. I'm looking at you, Fedora installer. But OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is one of the rare distros I installed using all its defaults that did not manage to give me a bootable system. After rebooting and removing the USB drive, it dropped me into a grub prompt and I couldn't boot anything. Not a great start. I reinstalled it, this time carefully picking my partition layout, and this time it worked. I feel that the defaults should have been picked better, especially since it was just a wipe the whole disk and recreate your layout kind of thing. It's not like I was trying to dual boot. Probably related to UEFI, but I don't know. Now, once I managed to boot the system, I got a very vanilla GNOME experience with GNOME 44. No extensions, no themes, it's the default experience, and that's great. There's a small welcome app that will let you access various online resources and documentation, and that's it. On KDE, there's a tiny bit more customization applied, with an OpenSUSE logo as the menu, and the title bars defaulting to the Breeze classic look, instead of the cleaner, regular color scheme. It doesn't depart from the base KDE layout, it's still super vanilla. Tumbleweed comes with a lot of pre-installed software like Evolution, GIMP, LibreOffice, a few games, Tiger VNC, Transmission, and, of course, their Yast utility. Flatpak is pre-installed and Flathub is enabled, which is good. But pre-installed apps and wallpapers and the like are just boring, like you can change those super easily, they really don't matter. So let's talk about Yast. Yast is a control center and setup utility that's been the mainstay of OpenSUSE for years. It lets you configure your system in depth, way more than what the default settings in GNOME or KDE let you do. Now, Yast is clearly developed as a cute application because it looks a bit borked on GNOME. It doesn't resize properly, the elements are weirdly placed, it, it just looks weird, but it's still absolutely usable. On KDE, it looks a bit more normal, they probably should not try and theme it on GNOME and just use the KDE theme there. So first, Yast lets you manage software. You can add, remove or edit software repositories and their GPG keys and you can install packages or apply patches. This opens a very complete graphical package manager that reminded me of Synaptic. You can install libraries, drivers, whatever is not available in GNOME software or in Discover, and it's all RPM packages. And you can use that tool to update, pin a package to a specific version, remove packages, or search and install new ones. It also lets you check dependencies so you can fix potential issues. It looks complex on the surface, but it's actually very easy to use. And it's something that most regular distributions don't give you anymore. Like Ubuntu, Fedora, or Mint, you don't really have access graphically to the libraries you can install, to the underlying packages. So that's just a little bit more added power with a graphical interface, and you still have the regular, usual GNOME software or Discover if all you want is just to install an app. Yast also lets you install what they call add-on products. These things are more meant for companies and deployments in enterprise settings, like for example the SUSE Linux Enterprise Workstation extension that you could install. The only thing I could add as a non-enterprise user was additional community repos, like one for NVIDIA drivers or decoding DVDs. But Yast is also a super complete tool if you want to configure a lot of advanced settings graphically, or if you're a system administrator. Yast lets you configure the bootloader, adding kernel parameters graphically, enabling secure boot or trusted boot with just one checkbox, and even changing the options, like the default system to boot on, the grub timeout, or setting up a password. That's a really good graphical tool to have, especially if you have multiple operating systems on the same computer. Yeah, you, the one that keeps a Windows partition to play Destiny 2. I see you, Kevin, I know what you did. You also get a services manager to let you enable or disable various services that run in the background, much like what you would find on Windows. Having a graphical tool for that is great. There's a sysconfig graphical editor to set up various variables related to your desktop, hardware, window manager, and more, with detailed explanations of each variable and what it does. And that's probably more useful for enterprise, where you might want to set up the exact same configuration on every single workstation, or if you just need to quickly fix an issue by adjusting a variable. And then there are security settings for app armor, for configuring the firewall, for hardening the system by disabling or enabling various features and settings, 
and you can consult the logs all graphically. You can also manage printers and scanners, but the built-in tools for this are not great. They look unnecessarily complex, and they kind of reminded me of the various Windows XP era wizards to configure hardware. My wireless printer was also not detected by Yast, for example, when it was automatically recognized and added on every other distro I ever tried. It's an HP printer, and there's a Run HP Setup button, so I clicked that, only for it to tell me that a package needed to be installed, and then it displayed an error message and didn't even try to let me install the package directly from there. Not the best user experience I ever had, but no matter, I installed the package using the Yast software manager. And then running the HP setup, it still could not detect my printer, and the GNOME printer settings also failed to detect it. Turns out the firewall was configured to block printer-related services and ports. Now, sure, you do get a ton more settings to share a printer, set up a print server, or choose policies to specify what the printer should do in specific cases. That's all very useful. But if you can't get your printer to work, it sort of doesn't matter. It's this printer over here, and it always worked on every single distro I ever tried, automatically. It's connected through the network. It was always detected without having to install any single package. Not so on OpenSUSE. And then Yast has things I don't think are really needed anymore in a separate tool, like the date and time settings, the language settings, the network settings, the partitioning tool. All of these have equivalents in the Plasma or GNOME desktops. And as far as I can tell, the Yast utilities don't do more than the built-in tools. And still, Yast is kind of fascinating. Once I used it, I started to wonder why desktop environments don't give users access to these configs, or why there isn't a third-party tool to manage these. These things are not crucial for most users, but for enterprise or just advanced users that like to get into the nitty-gritty, having these graphical tools is really fantastic. Now, it also showed me there is still a graphical gap between Windows and Linux. All these things are configurable graphically on Windows. On Linux, only OpenSUSE ships that by default. But on the other hand, Yast's UI isn't great. Some settings are completely redundant with the desktop settings, and some defaults are just not good, like the firewall blocking network printers. It is a very powerful tool, and I wish a lot of desktop environments tried to imitate it, or at least if there were a third-party tool that did that for every other distro. But Yast seriously needs a big coat of polish and UX work. Now, Tumbleweed also comes with a few interesting things. First, you get a graphical BetterFS snapshot manager. It lets you create or delete snapshots, which you'll be able to restore to to revert your system to a usable state. It's a very nice addition. You also get a command line tool called Snapper, which lets you clean up the snapshots, view the differences between them, and more. Now, second, Tumbleweed is a rolling release, but it's a good one. It doesn't just drop packages on you once they're available. They perform a lot of testing on them. You still get the latest kernels and drivers and packages, which means you'll always be up to date, but without stability issues. In the few weeks I spent with the distro, I had no problems whatsoever, even after updates. And sure, a few weeks is not enough to know how well a distro will hold up in the long run. But I had no issues, no problems getting updates, no crashes, no error messages telling me something crashed or closed unexpectedly. And that's not something I can say even for a fresh install of Ubuntu or even Fedora. OpenSUSE also has a web portal to find and install applications. You can access it from the Welcome app, and it lists all applications for your distro. Clicking on the Install button opens the default software store to install the app, or you can download a YMP file that you can open from OpenSUSE, which will launch the Yast one-click install tool. And you might wonder, what's the point when you already have a package manager and a graphical store? Well, it's probably for enterprise deployments. You could download these super, super tiny YMP files carry them around, put them on every workstation you want to set up, and execute them all with a script, and they'll automatically pull the latest version of a package. It's pretty cool. So, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is the best rolling release I ever used. It basically killed my preconceived notion that rolling release distros cannot be as stable as fixed release distros. 
And it's probably the best choice for anyone who likes to configure things in depth with graphical tools or for people looking to deploy workstations without specifically needing the enterprise support. Having graphical tools to configure everything means you don't need the command line to fix issues, which is really cool. But it's also not perfect with a few baffling issues. The installer not giving me a bootable system right there and then, that's something I haven't seen in decades. It might have been a fluke, but it's still not good. And as good as Yast can be, it's also pretty dated, with a lot of redundant modules and a user interface only a mother could love. And yes, I know I care too much about UI and UX and consistency, and most people don't. Tumbleweed is not the most user-friendly distro to install, but it's really not hard either. And once you're in, it's just as simple as anything else, and it's a great choice for any beginner or advanced user. It is criminally underrated, and I'm sorry it took me so long to finally take a look at it. So I'll put it on my list of distributions to try once I'm tired of Fedora and Gnome on my desktop and I want to move to KD. At the moment, Tumbleweed is on the top of that list. Just like our sponsor should be at the top of yours. Tuxedo makes laptops and desktops that come with Linux out of the box. And if you're wondering what the advantage of this is, well, basically, you know that when you buy, by clicking the link in the description below, you get a device that will run Linux. All the components were picked specifically, so no Bluetooth issue, no GPU issues, no display issues, no Wi-Fi issues, you know everything will run. They have a big selection of computers for every need, every price point, whether you're looking for a laptop, a desktop, a workstation, a gaming device, an affordable little thing you can carry around. They have everything, all devices, are very customizable and all the laptops are openable, repairable and upgradable with at least the battery, the SSD and the RAM being accessible and sometimes even the wireless card. So if you need a new computer, stop looking at Windows devices, buy something that runs Linux from the link in the description below. So thanks everyone for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment and if you didn't like it, well, you can always dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to help support it, there are plenty of links in the description for LibraPay, Patreon, PayPal, YouTube memberships, YouTube thanks, whatever. You know how this works. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.